Hey everyone, I'm Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, and uh, yeah, I think a Nintendo Direct is happening in September. In fact, I think the evidence for it that's happening right now is compelling. Plus, if we look at the history of the Nintendo Directs, we can clearly see that September is basically the month that Nintendo always does a Nintendo Direct, and outside of one year, we'll get into that. Uh, and I might be able to even tell you what day the Nintendo Direct is happening, and it's going to be on a non-traditional day if history is to be correct here so let's just jump right into why we think a nintendo direct is coming in september so the first thing we had happen and you guys have probably heard this news from some other outlets is this leak from gamestop so essentially uh it is now up to 18 new games have appeared on gamestop's computers uh new available SKUs that uh, you can pre-order although there's no names attached to them yet on GameStop's uh, computers their internal systems at the stores now when this happens traditionally it's right before there's about to be a big event this traditionally happens before E3 or before Nintendo directs so to see so many of them is to suggest that there will be 18 games or so that will be available to pre-order soon uh, unveiled in some sort of major event gamescom just passed so it wasn't that so it's obviously pointing towards the nintendo direct now this doesn't mean 18 triple a titles of course there could be remasters in there there could be ports uh there could also just be indie games because you can buy indie games from gamestop so uh a lot of stuff that could be talked about here uh so yeah this is the first piece of evidence that something is happening soon we're almost to the end of august so it makes a lot of sense for it to be happening in september now there's other evidence to go along with this, and this is that directs seem to always happen in September, and this is probably some of the biggest evidence there is. Uh, here we see the history of Nintendo Directs uh, when they started happening back in 2011. And if you go to uh, 2012, the first time of September could have happened, uh, there was one for Brain Age Concentration Training on September 7th in Japan. There was a Japan-only one for that particular game. There was a general Wii U Nintendo Direct on September 13th. Uh, and this happened in Japan, North America. Obviously, that was the big one. Uh, and then there was another Nintendo Direct Mini in Japan only in September on September 28th for Super Mario Bros. 2. All right, so let's fast forward to 2013. As we scroll down here, uh, there's a lot of directs that happened in 2013. Uh, but you'll see that we had a Pokemon X and Y Direct uh, happen on September 4th. A, a Nintendo Direct for Monster Hunter 4 happened on September 8th. Uh, a Wii Fit U Nintendo Direct happened on September 18th. Now, uh, you'll notice there wasn't a big general Direct in September, but as you can see, there was a lot of Directs in uh, in. in 2013 uh that's because they were they were really focused on doing a lot of um you know individual game directs I and mean, you did see back in may 17th of 2013 uh wii u and 3ds game general direct but uh that's just not something that was extremely common that year is a lot of individual game directs and direct minis all right so fast forward to 2014 and we'll scroll down here and oh wait a second there was one Actually, two, I should say. There was a Bayonetta 2 Direct on September 4th. With, that one was worldwide. And then there was a Nintendo 3DS only Direct in Australia on uh, September 24th. So, again, lots of September stuff. All right, so let's scroll down now. we got 2015 here. Uh, and you'll notice in 2015 that uh, there wasn't very many Directs. And that meant there was not a Direct uh, for for September. We had said so we had a general direct in uh, November, but there was nothing in September. Uh, that was kind of an oddball year uh, because as you'll see in uh, 2016, we had a Nintendo 3DS direct for the whole world on September 1st. So again, another direct in September. All right, uh, 2017, uh, things start to get very, very interesting. So we'll scroll down here and uh, you'll see that uh, there was a Fire Emblem Heroes kind of direct style thing. Uh, it was just like a showcase on September 13th. There was also a general Nintendo Direct for Nintendo Switch and 3DS that focused on Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Super Mario Odyssey, but that was a general Nintendo Direct on September 13th, 2017. If you remember, back in 2012, they also had a Direct on September 13th. Isn't that interesting? Um, all right, so scroll down to 2018. This is just last year, and sure enough, we had a general Nintendo Direct on September 13th uh, for Nintendo Switch and Nintendo 3DS games. So now we're here in 2019, and I'm here to tell you guys that we're going to get a Direct in September because they've done one every single September except for one uh, in 2015, which was kind of an oddball uh, year, and that was probably the year they decided they were going to, uh, you know, 
delay Breath of the Wild for the Switch and all that stuff. So kind of an oddball year that year. But uh, what's interesting is that September 13th has happened three times. Now, uh, Nintendo Directs typically happen on Tuesdays or Thursdays. But what's interesting about the last two years is uh, in 2017, it landed on a Thursday, right? September 13th was on a Thursday. But last year, September 13th was on a Wednesday. So, I think, based on the last two years, plus I guess you could throw 2012 in the mix, the September 13th seems like a pretty damn safe bet. And September 13th this year lands on a Friday. So as long as it's not a weekend, I think it's highly plausible that uh, September 13th could be the date, and it's going to be a general direct. They have consistently, since Switch launched, uh, had a, 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 what really, 2017, 2018, had a September 13th general direct. I don't see any reason for them not to do that. In, in addition to the 18 new titles, that will be available to pre-order and or purchase on GameStop soon. All right, uh, but the evidence doesn't stop there. So Nintendo put up this tweet. Uh, I'm not sure how much to make of it, but there are, there's a lot of hype videos going on out there. Um, so uh, Mario needs a little summer vacation. No matter where your summer odyssey took you, we hope it was filled with sunshine. Obviously, there's a reference to Mario Odyssey in there. Uh, there's also a reference to summertime and sunshine, and that makes people think of Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, there's been rumors and reports around that being remastered for quite some time. I don't know how popular of a remaster it would be, uh, but that is something that people are thinking will happen. Uh, there's some other stuff going on as well because in this Nintendo Direct speculation thread on Reset Era, I got a couple things here uh, where Emily Rogers speaks of. Now, Emily Rogers has been right on a lot of things uh, as an insider for Switch in particular. Let's ignore everything that happened before. For Switch, she's been right on a lot of things, including like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle and a whole bunch of stuff that she's already been right on so far this year uh, happening. And one thing is she states that there is going to be a um, mystery fourth game uh, for Switch. So the, the first mystery game was Astro Chain and Link's Awakening Super Mario Maker 2. There's a mystery fourth game that's exclusive for Switch that's going to be landing in December that has not been announced yet. Uh, that is what she is sticking by her guns on that one. Uh, so that is something to consider that they would need to unveil soon if it's coming out this December. I wouldn't expect it to be like some major game, but you know, it could be like a WarioWare or, or, or something along those lines, kind of a, a, a tweener title that uh, maybe just needs to be announced outside of the hoopla of E3 and Breath of the Wild 2 and all that jazz um so there, there's that uh going on there also uh she is saying that there's some sort of port from wii u from 2013 we know 2013 uh is the year that pikmin 3 came out and king zell as well over on reset era has basically said that pikmin 3 is coming to switch uh and he's been right on literally everything he's ever talked about with switch so actually he's been right on everything he's ever talked about period he's pretty well connected whoever king zell is so uh yeah um pikmin 3 port and that's being suggested to release in uh january or february of 2020 that could be announced now as kind of a hey you know it's kind of new super mario Bros. u deluxe uh for next year so again a lot of this is all speculative a lot of this is just hey look look at what's been happening with directs over the past you know I don't know, almost decade at this point, uh, but it's still very interesting to look at. Now, uh, there's some other evidence out there as well that's kind of on the fringe that's really hard for me to find uh, right now, but uh, it was brought up in this Reset Era thread, so I figured uh, I would talk about it a little bit. For starters, there's an old 4chan rumor uh, that listed everything that Nintendo was going to do at E3, and they nailed literally everything except for two things and these two things were things they said might be at e3 and they weren't uh that being warioware a new warioware title for switch and then a 2.5 d metroid game so uh those are pretty safe bets and could be something that would be uh announced uh potentially at a direct uh, so that's something to keep in mind uh, if that 4chan thread wasn't just completely lucky uh and actually you know was right and in, in insider information which it looks like it was so far but Again, these are kind of the two titles people put, ha ha, those weren't at E3, even though apparently in the thread for it, it said might be at E3, not that these two titles would be at E3. Uh, so that is basically the gist of it. So what I really want to know is what do you guys think of all of this information? I think some of the most compelling uh, is obviously the GameStop stuff and then uh, the prior times that they have had Nintendo Directs because September seems like a month that they're basically going to do every single time, whether it's a mini, whether it's a regular Direct or an individual game Direct. And we know that September... 
By the way, we have the launch of the Switch Lite. So, again, could be a, a, another chance to hype that up. We know there's a whole, there's like three major games coming out in September as well. Link's Awakening obviously being the highlight that releases the same day as the Switch Lite. Uh, so, there's just a lot of great stuff happening. Uh, and we can't forget, when we get to the end of August here, we have Astral Chain coming as well. Uh, so, honestly, I want to get your guys' thoughts on this, on what you think in general of this uh, Nintendo Direct. Now, to end this video, uh, I kind of want to bring something up that's off topic. Uh, but related to the channel, and if you're not interested in what happens at this channel, uh, I guess you can click away. Uh, if you are interested, obviously drop a like, subscribe, comment below, uh, especially comment below on this. Uh, I am debating currently on uh, changing the name of the channel. I know going through rebrands is not something that uh, is generally smiled upon, and I'll probably lose a bunch of subs over a rebrand, but... Uh, one thing I want to do uh, with this channel, and I've, I've been thinking about a rebrand for a long time, and now that I had this health scare and all this stuff, I, I, I kind of want to make this channel um, an all-purpose channel. So we'll still do Nintendo. We'll still have the Nintendo Prime podcast. Uh, we'll still be talking about Nintendo news, uh, a lot of it. Um, you know, Prime news might come back at some point as well. Uh, but I, I want to also be able to talk about other things happening in gaming. I want to sometimes talk about uh, things happening in pop culture, like... Uh, the Spider-Man MCU universe stuff or, or whatever. It's just an example. Uh, and I don't want to have to make a second channel for all of that because I don't think I personally have the ability to maintain two separate channels like that. I'd rather just all be one channel. And I am basically Nintendo Prime. Like Nintendo Prime is just a, a username. It's not really uh, me. So the question is, you know, what what do I do about that? Uh, there's been a lot of rebrand names. You know, I could keep the MP initials and just go Nate Prime using my name. Uh, that's obviously one I've been leaning towards. Uh, but there's a lot of potential options out there. So I want to get your guys' ideas on a potential rebrand. I mean, do I just use my name? I know I use my name on another channel, but maybe I could use a shortened form of my name here, like Nate Jance or something. Um, I don't know. You guys let me know uh, what you personally are, are, are feeling here. I want a more general username. So so I'm not just locked into Nintendo only all the time. I'll give you a prime example here, actually. Uh, Game Explain. Uh, Game Explain is well known for like some of the best Nintendo coverage around, over a million subs, biggest Nintendo channel around. But they're slowly starting to cover more than just Nintendo. And it's easier for them to shift to that because the name of the channel, Game Explain, isn't in, you know intrinsically, this is a Nintendo channel. It's a we're a gaming channel, and we just happen to cover primarily Nintendo. And I feel like my channel is still going to end up being primarily Nintendo because that's what I'm interested in. But the ability for me to do things like stream Madden, you know, like uh, stream Madden and actually have it fit with the channel uh, because I have Madden on PC, and it, it would be kind of cool to do that. Or, or, you know, WoW Classic is launching. It'd be, it'd be cool to stream that as, as something else I'm interested in. Uh, it, it would be cool to uh, potentially talk about games on PlayStation 5 or, like, the heck, the, there's that PlayStation 5 dev kit leak. Like, that's just something that doesn't currently fit with the channel. And these things interest me, and I'd like to talk about them. And I've come up with ways, you know, to talk about them in the past, uh, but those ways weren't necessarily necessarily uh fitting with the channel name and it confused some people so uh i've already rebranded this channel once from zelda informer to nintendo prime uh moving it beyond nintendo prime is a pretty big shift uh and i don't know that i necessarily want it to be like a gaming prime centric name I, I i want it to be more centered around i guess me as a person as a human being uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to segment things properly. Like if I make a video about my family or my kids or whatever, have that kind of be its own thing. Uh, have the, have all the gaming news be its own thing. Nintendo stuff may be on its own, Sony, Microsoft, etc. However, I want to divvy that up, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe expand prime news or have two different news shows. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how I want to structure it just yet. Uh, but what I do know is that I'm still going to be covering primarily Nintendo and mostly Nintendo. Uh, but I want my name to not one, not be a copyrighted name like Nintendo prime. Nintendo itself is a copyrighted trademark. I can't technically use that as a business. Uh, and I just want to free myself to kind of talk about the rest of the industry and what's going on uh, when bad things are happening in Anthem and I have something I want to talk about or, or, or happening with games that aren't coming to Switch. Uh, I'm still going to be hyped when games do come to Switch and we'll talk about that. Uh, but I kind of want to expand the horizons a little bit here and give me um, some room to grow. Does that make sense? Room to grow. Obviously, there's room to grow as a Nintendo content creator uh, based on all the other Nintendo content creators out there. And I know there's a lot of Nintendo focused general youtube channels out there uh so i get that some people are like oh man one thing we liked about you is that you were just nintendo uh but 
honestly, I, I, I need to be flexible and I need to ebb and flow with my interest or I could lose interest in the channel. Now, that's not happening yet. And as I said, I plan to cover Nintendo, you know, hardcore for a long time. Uh, but I, I would like to start maybe growing a, an, an additional audience that appreciates more than just Nintendo. And honestly, I think some of you are already that way. So I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. If you stayed on for this little extra bit, I really thank you. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I won't waste any more of your guys' time. Uh, I'm just glad to be back on camera chit-chatting with you all. Uh, and I'll, you know what? If you have any name suggestions for the channel uh, or, or whatever, let me know down in the description. Otherwise, I will catch you guys all in the next video. Yeah.